What's going on guys, Levy here and welcome back to another Albion Online video. Today I'm going to show you the top 5 builds for the Corrupted Dungeons. This 1v1 content has been very popular among the entire player base ever since release, from the newest all the way to the most seasoned players. And not only does it make for amazing fame and loot, which sometimes belongs to your opponent, it also makes for fierce competition. And when you talk about competition, you talk about being the best, which is a conversation you can't have without talking about meta. Although the meta changes, along the nerfs and buffs, the various items and abilities, it remains a crucial factor worth chasing. Today's builds are the top meta for August 2021 and beyond. I used the same method Blessed Baron used, in which I looked at the top ranked players on the leaderboard, looked at what's popular on YouTube, and finally used my personal knowledge about the game to rank these builds from 5 to 1. Starting with number 5, we have the One-Handed Maze, which has been very popular for a while now. However, it does seem to slowly lose its edge as it certainly isn't as popular and threatening as it used to be, but still strong enough to be placed in the top 5, which definitely isn't something to overlook. This weapon shows up a few times on the leaderboard and is also very popular on YouTube. The builds for it vary slightly, in which players sometimes take the Assassin Jacket or the Armor of Feller, and they also use various boots. Nonetheless, it still is a fairly affordable build for the Corrupted Dungeons. The clear speed in PvE is not that great, but I would say this build is probably the easiest one to play among the 5 builds that are mentioned in this video. This build simply has a lot of crowd control and mobility, which at the same time also make for damage. Therefore, it's a very frustrating build to play against. When you have these amounts of CC and mobility, you basically get to decide the terms of the battle. But with the recent changes to the Corrupted Dungeons, that's becoming less of a factor, which is why it's only natural for the one-handed maze to drop in popularity. Nonetheless, if you do want to play a top-tier weapon with a low entry level, both in skill and cost, the one-handed maze is definitely something worth considering. On number 4 we have the Frost Staff, which shows up multiple times in the top rankings. It was a bit more difficult to find videos on YouTube, but I think that's mostly because Frost weapons are always in a good place, and the player base kind of knows this already. The builds also don't really change that much for this weapon, as they are often very specific. This is the Frost build the top players use, and one I'm very surprised about, because this is a very cheap build. It doesn't use any artifact items whatsoever, so a build for the Corrupted Dungeons simply doesn't become much cheaper than this. Therefore it's a very affordable one even for newer players. And it's also one that will carry you from Hunter to Stalker all the way to being a top player on the Slayer level. A few tips to go with this build is that you can take any of the Sandals as you mostly select it for the run ability and aggression passive. But the two Sandals I've seen the most across the board are Scholar and Cleric which sometimes you may use the unique ability of if it's necessary. So stick to either and you will be fine. You also want to swap your Q ability based on the matchup. If you don't have food swaps with you, you're probably best off with your pork omelette. The great thing about this build, aside from being affordable and good in PvP, is that it will also breeze through the PvE. In fact, this is the fastest build for PvE by far among the 5 weapons mentioned today. Now, I'm not a Frost player myself, but there are plenty of streamers and YouTubers that are, so I recommend you check them out and ask your questions live on Twitch or through the YouTube comments. At number 3 we have the Tomb Hammer, and this is one that is quickly pushing its way to the very top. In fact, some of the top ranked players in the weekly rankings are using this weapon. Overall, the Tomb Hammer appears a few times across the leaderboard when we look at the top 30, and definitely is one of the strongest picks in the current meta. Now the sudden gain in popularity for the Tomb Hammer probably is related to the recent changes of the Corrupted Dungeons. As far as I'm aware, the weapon itself didn't have any buffs to it for a while now. In fact, the last change I remember was actually a very noticeable nerf. The build is one we're all familiar with, in which you of course pair your ultimate with the Demon Cape, lock your enemy in place and do damage. This build simply makes for great mobility, great CC, and plenty of utility to your helmet and armor. And since you are wearing a paid piece with this build, you are also very tanky. I think the most noticeable thing, and with that the best feature of the Tomb Hammer, is the ranged stun that's on a very low cooldown. The only swap I've seen for this build was the Mage Cowl instead of the Fiend Cowl, which you can take for more damage if you wish to sacrifice your perch. 
but I believe this build already has enough damage as it is, may even one shot some of your enemies if you get a full combo in. Now the downside to this build is that it isn't great at clearing in PvE and it's also pretty costly. But if you do want to play this build, you do have to break the piggy first. On number 2 we have the Girl Seeker that shows up multiple times in the weekly top 5 alone. And that already says enough about the popularity of this weapon. The Girl Seeker has been holding spots at the top of the leaderboard for a while now and today it is no different. The builds that are being used in general are pretty similar to each other, although there are a few possibilities you can choose from. Now the Grail Seeker alone already makes for a ton of features. If we just look at the Q ability, we're already talking about mobility, CC and a resistance buff. Then you have even more mobility and CC on your W and your ultimate can root an enemy in place twice whilst dealing damage. And that's just the weapon. The rest of the build makes for even more CC and mobility a lot of additional damage and with the plate piece as your armor you're also very tanky even more so with the resistance buff of the wind wall you're basically looking at a build and playstyle that can do whatever it wants to you whilst you can't do much against it in return someone playing the grail seeker has to make a series of bad decisions before you can even punish them for it you just have so much cc mobility and utility with this weapon that it's not even funny anymore and talking about things that aren't funny, let's talk about the number one weapon, which is the Hello Fall. Believe me when I say I wish this was different. I mean, anyone that's playing Corrupted Dungeons already knows how unbalanced healing is in a 1v1. And despite the nerfs healing received within the Corrupted Dungeons, we're still at a meta where the Hello Fall is not only ranked first in the weekly rankings, but also is the most played weapon across the leaderboard. There is one build for this weapon that's really popular and everyone seems to be playing it. So if you want to pick up the current number one build, this is what you want to play. For the purpose of this video, I went out to Slayer and tried this build out myself, but anyone watching me for longer than a day already knows I'm a terrible healer. Therefore, I didn't have much success myself. And the last thing I want to do is act as if I know what I'm talking about when I talk about this build, because I most definitely would be lying. But as far as my knowledge goes about the game, you're pretty much unkillable because of the huge sustain in healing, iframe on your ultimate, knockback on your W and all of this enhanced by the huge cooldown bonuses on both your offhand and your jacket. Also, you basically can't get slowed or rooted because of your sandals, which even allows you to bypass some of the traps within the corrupt dungeons. You're simply looking at an unstoppable healer that will slowly kill you with damage overtime abilities and the tethered cape whilst nullifying any damage you do. The majority of the builds that enter the corrupt dungeons will simply not be able to out damage a healer and how everything in this build comes together simply makes for a lot of damage and mobility aside from healing. The only downside to this build really is the terrible clear in PvE and the price. It is a very expensive build, but other than that there really aren't any downsides to it, which is why it's the number one ranked build in today's video. So in conclusion, we're looking at a healer build at number one, three lockdown builds and the ever viable frost build. And this honestly sounds very typical for the corrupted dungeons. Although there are a few other weapons that would be honorable mentions, such as the one-handed spear, broadsword and blood ladder, unfortunately they can't compete with healing and lockdown mechanics. If you wish to pursue one of the weapons or builds in today's video, do remember that the meta can and will change at some point which may affect your chosen weapon or build in turn. If you want more videos like this, make sure to press the thumbs up and feel free to subscribe if you haven't yet. As always, remember to have fun and I'll see you next time.